Is my microphone still? Yeah, it is. Welcome to worship this morning. This is an exciting day because as we're all gathered together, yes, and we can actually celebrate Palm Sunday in person instead of virtual like we had to do last year, it is an exciting time. And it's a, a service that, that moves us, you know, from celebratory to very pensive, very thoughtful by the end. We will be having the passion story read by a variety of people. And uh, don't worry that you won't be able to hear them because they're using a mic, we're using mics, everybody should be able to hear, hopefully, God willing. It's wonderful to have Bob Baird here. I saw him in the hallway, but he was already down the hall, so I didn't yell at him. But uh, we thank you for being here, Bob. And just a very few announcements. The main thing is that um, there is, excuse me, an announcement in your bulletin about big sister, big brothers and big sisters. They're having their first annual, in other words, the first time they've done this, uh, plant sale for a fundraiser. Information is in your bulletin, and there's a website you can look at or a phone number. And it's a 10-inch hanging basket for $20, and there's a variety of flowers that you can choose from. There, uh, there's just one thing missing in the calendar, and that's the Wednesday after Easter, we will be having the women's Bible study at 10 a.m., it didn't get in the bulletin, but that's when we're scheduled to have it. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Church cleaning? Yes, on Tuesday. Well, it's in my script. I don't know if it's in your calendar. Oh, I beg your pardon. I keep hoping that whatever's in my script is the same in the bulletin. We're not there just yet. Okay, we will have a processional in, so uh, I will be reading the announcement of the day, and then we will have special music, and we will have the confession and forgiveness from the uh, end of the aisle before we process in. This week, the center of the church's year is one of striking contrasts. Jesus rides into Jerusalem, surrounded by shouts of glory, only to be left alone to die on the cross, abandoned by even his closest friends. Mark's gospel presents Jesus in his complete human vulnerability, agitated, grieved, scared, forsaken. Though we lament Christ's suffering and all human suffering, we also expect God's salvation. In the wine and bread, Jesus promises that his death will mark a new covenant with all people. We enter this holy week thirsty for the completion of God's astonishing work.
It was beautiful. A quick announcement. We're going to ask if the children, or adults, if you want to process in with us too, but if you just kind of fall in with us when we go forward, and then lay your palm branch down in front of the um, kneeling rail, okay? Just like we would have laid, laid them down on the road for Jesus, okay? Anybody who wants to. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but we would love to have you join us when we get ready. Would you please rise for the confession and forgiveness? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We ask you to turn and face the cross as we process in. I just leaned over to Shelley and said, better late than never. It's been a long time since we've processed in. I forgot to stop. <clears throat> Get back on track here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. to settle something once and for all. Who is the real hero of Easter? Please welcome our two debaters, Alex. <laughs> and Hunter. Easter is all about one thing, the Easter Bunny. Easter is all about Jesus. The Easter Bunny comes from a magical rabbit hole where he spends all year painting eggs. But Jesus comes from heaven where he spends all day every day watching over us. One month every year, the Easter Bunny comes to the Southern Hills Mall where from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., children can take turns visiting and asking him for candy and presents. While Jesus is available all day every day, we can ask him for anything, he listens. Yeah, well, the Easter Bunny travels all over the world on Easter night, and he brings us eggs and bunnies and even chocolate. Jesus is everywhere we go, day or night. He is always there when we need him. Oh, and oh, by the way, he made eggs and bunnies and even chocolate. The Easter Bunny loves us so much, he brings us peeps. <laughs> Jesus loves us so much, he died for our sins. The Easter Bunny comes to visit us on Easter because because he's the Easter Bunny. Jesus is the reason we celebrate Easter in the first place. Say what? It's true, on Easter we remember that Jesus dies, died and rose again. He did? And because Jesus lives, we can have eternal life. But? And forgiveness of sins. But? And a more abundant life here on earth. But, oh, who am I kidding? Where's the Easter Bunny when you have a bad dream? Or when you need a friend? Or when someone you love is in the hospital? You tell me. He's not where I need him. But Jesus is. You're right, Easter baskets are great, but Jesus is greatest. The Gospel of the Passion is taken from the 14th and 15th chapters of the Gospel of Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. And because it's very long, you may be seated. You can thank me later. The Passion story in Mark's Gospel presents Jesus as one who dies abandoned by all. He shows himself to be the true Son of God by giving his life for those who have forsaken him. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests 
and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to one another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes where it, as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. To them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please rise. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had blessed it, he gave it to all, saying, This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal, and be fed. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of steadfast love, at this table, you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, Are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once again more he came back and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid their hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? 
What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? And all of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophecy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you're talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder against the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. Morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way the chief priests along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. 
Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph, and Mary the, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee, and there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, He asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the word of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ.
please join with me in the words of our faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God according to their need. Heavenly Father, as we enter into this Holy Week, help us to remember that you mourned as you watched your son as he was tried, as he was found guilty, and when he was crucified. Your tears of sorrow are familiar to those who have lost loved ones, and especially those who have lost children. Give us strength to face days ahead. Give all the promise that you remain with them. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks, Lord, as we watch the earth return to life after a long winter. We rejoice as we see the flowers coming up from the ground, the trees beginning to bud, as we enjoy a little more daylight each day, Lord. Help us not to take for granted any of your gifts, but to be good stewards of all that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy. Be with your people around the world, Heavenly Father. Let peace reign in our lifetime. Let us be workers for that peace. Where there is anger and hatred, we beg for the courage to speak up for peace and for love of neighbor and of enemy. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those who suffered this day, but especially lift up to you with our prayers for healing for Candace, and Glenna, Chase, Sean, Chris, Margaret, Jean, Adam, Jim, Chris, Terry, Ron, Olivia, Mackenzie, Brian, Teresa, Richard, Peter, Janice, Becky, Louise, Jacob, Bruce, Wendy, Jean, Clyde, Gary, Larry, Paul, Michael, Dorothy, Merrill, Steve, Viking family, Jane, Tammy, and those affected by disasters and diseases throughout the world. We also pray for the families of the church, Jesse, Lane, and Chase Coons, Tim, Leros, Mike, Connie, and Ingrid Larson, Jerry and Sue LaVey, Jonathan and Lexi LaVey, and the others we name before you. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you do hear all our prayers. Sustain us and strengthen us, that we may continue to rejoice and to celebrate your Son's life, death, and resurrection. We pray this all in your holy and precious name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news with enthusiasm. Why don't you put the candles out? You've been waiting a year for this. 